uh, we're also going to be ha uh, having a guest join us virtually from Lagos. And this is informed of the back of the emerging controversies in the oil industry, particularly in Nigeria, where one of the leading players, Dangote Refinery, has lamented some of the cabals frustrating the progress of the refinery. Now, joining us this morning on the show uh, is engineer Godwin Ibe, who would lend his thoughts to the conversation. Uh, he's also been a player in the space for a while. Hello, good morning to you, Engineer Godwin. Can you hear us? Uh, good morning. Uh, I can hear you loud and clear. It's my pleasure to uh, speak with you. Uh, welcome to the show. I have uh, two other persons in the studio. You'll get to meet them shortly. But first off, uh, one of these controversies, the one that has gained limelight, is some of the heartbreaking calls from Dangote Refinery in what he has called an obstruction by cabals in being able to churn out some refined products to Nigerians, particularly... PMS. Uh, let's get your thoughts on these developments in recent times, especially in Nigeria's oil industry. Thank you very much. Um, it is actually unfortunate that we're having this doing and throwing controversies, arguments and counter arguments on something that should be resolved. You know, uh, permit me to use the word amicably. You know, um, there's no time in any business or anything you are doing. They will not have conflicts or, or have controversies or have issues that need to be resolved. But the important thing to address them in a constructive way, not a destructive way, uh, so that uh, we find a solution that is of common good to us, you know, as Nigerians, as a nation, as a people. You know, I think the argument is unfortunate. It's, I, if you ask me, it is unnecessary. Um, it, should, it, should, it should have uh, been better handled especially by um, by the NMDPRA boss. Um, I think coming to the, uh, I mean, coming to the world to tell us that our our product is not good enough is demarketing us. And I don't think um, it should be that way. Uh, I'm happy that uh, the issue has been addressed. I think very recently, the uh, Minister of State met with uh, both parties and some representative uh, in government to try to find a solution uh, and resolve this issue so that we can uh, we can move ahead in a constructive and amicable manner. And in all fairness, I think what Dangude has done needs to be commended. I mean, his uh, his refinery. Yeah, it could have been done better, though, uh, as an engineer, because I followed through uh, some of the di discussions uh, in the in the um, in you know in the media. But uh, uh, overall. I think I think we need to commend me for taking that bold step. You know, at least let's have a refiner that is working, a big refiner that is working, and well, then other issues can be uh, addressed, uh, taken off from there. Well, well in, in Geneva, you have had um, about 46 years' experience in the oil and gas industry, uh, 30 of which you spent at, at uh, X, uh, X Shell and about five at X Plat. Now, my question to you uh, is. What are the economic gains of selling crude oil to the Dangote refinery in Naira, which is as a result of the directive by the president uh, to NNPCL just recently? Well, um, selling crude to Dangote in Naira is um, what the government has us to do. Uh, I, I'm, I'm the president has asked us to do. And I think um, it's something that could help uh, Dangote to stabilize. Uh, though crude oil is usually, um, you know, uh, denominated in dollar, but every country has her own peculiar problem and should address them in a peculiar manner. We have a peculiar problem, uh, and we should address our own in a peculiar manner. So if the president says we should sell to Dangote in Naira, then so be it. And then other issues can be addressed from there. You know, uh, life is, a, is is give and take. Some areas uh, it will not that benefit us, and some other areas it will benefit us. That's what I think. All right, Engineer Ibe, we have one more question owing to time, and it's in terms of the projections owing to the amount of crude Dangote would need. We're told that monthly it's in the margins of 1.7 trillion naira estimated owing to this instruction from the presidency to help him stabilize. Many are also looking at. Uh, our production barrels per day as not being quite sufficient in terms of the OPEC cut. How do we balance all these dynamics going into the future? 
Um, it does appear to me that it's imperative that um, some some uh, of the oil required by um, Dangote refinery be imported. For example, we produce about 1.3 million barrels of oil today. We have capacity to produce much more than that, maybe double at least, if not for the security issues and security problems we're having, a bunkering, you know, uh, piracy attacks and all that, community issues, you know. So if not for those, we could produce much more. You know, so we produce 1.3 say, and we consume 400 and uh, about 450 million barrels a day. You know, and then uh, if you remove that from 1.3, you have it on something. You know, and then um, and then uh, Dangote needs uh, much much more than than that. So it's it, it's imperative that Dangote may have to import some some of the oil uh, he needs uh, for the refinery, which I think is already doing. You know, so our capacity as a nation cannot meet the demands of, uh, of both Dangote and our, our, our local consumption. And of course, having set up the, the business, Dangote has to also, um, I mean, uh, 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 make some profit, you know. Break yeah, even especially from the perspective profit. of a private business owner. I agree with you. Yes, make but, some, break even and make some profit. But before you go, now there are projections that... Uh, the quality of his diesel, for instance, is going to upset the oil market in over 90 European countries. And many are saying that beyond the cabals he's complaining of in Nigeria, that uh, in importing this crude oil he needs, he might also face some stringent challenges. Do you agree to these assertions? Well, yeah, there will be challenge. There will be challenge. But I know for every problem, that is, there's always a solution. There's no problem that doesn't have a solution. So, yes, we attend to all that, and then whatever comes out of it, uh, then we will address it, and then we, we move forward. You know? That's what I think. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Engineer Godwin Ibe, for sharing your thoughts with us on the program this morning. It's been so, a pleasure having you. Yes, thank you. Sorry, sorry. may I just uh, permit me a few minutes to speak on, um, on a, a conference that is coming up in Abuja from 13 to... Uh, 15th of August. It has to do with um, security, security uh, and protection of oil and gas installations, and it's been it's been um, uh, uh, chaired or uh, under the auspices of uh, Office of the National Security Advisor and the Chief of Defense Staff, Chief of Army Staff, Chief of Air Staff, you know, uh, and Chief of Naval Staff are very much in the forefront of this uh, conference. It's called a uh, NISEC Expo Conference where you have military top brass from uh, all over Africa and uh, some other parts of the world to discuss issues on uh, military uh, protection and strategy in the, in the, in the, in the continent and uh, in our countries. But the difference for this year it used to be a two-day two program, but for this year, a third day has put, was slotted in that the second day to focus on security and protection of oil and gas installation and facilities that's on the on the 14th of um of uh, this month you know the conference starts on 13 uh, military uh, issues then 14th we talk of oil and gas protection and then um the last day okay all, all right all right thank engineer you. godwin we'll keep a date with you we're hopeful that uh, come the 13th and 14th we'll also be able to monitor the situation and keep our viewers abreast we appreciate you